welcome to Ash and Oak. I'm Ryan. I completely forgot to do the weekly recaps. I was actually just editing some videos uh, and came across the week two recap that I never uploaded and then realized I never did the week three recap and here we are on week four and I am, uh, I'm behind. Uh, Overcommitted, underdelivered, I'm sorry, but here we are for the official week three recap of the 31 days of bourbon. This is days 13 through 19. Um, let's just go ahead and get right into it. Welcome back to the 31 Days of Bourbon. This is day 13. We are going to drink bottle two. Very fruity nose, a little bit of toffee, uh, kind of sweet. There's, there's a note there that I can't quite pick up. Very smooth, a little bit of caramel, and then there's something else. It's, this is a finished bourbon. I think I know what it is. Aroma, I'm gonna give it a six. Uh, flavor, I'm gonna give it a seven. It's really good, very sweet, but not too sweet. Really nicely balanced. Finish, it lingers just a little bit. I'm gonna give it a 6.5. I'm pretty sure this is Angel's Envy. Uh, that sweetness I think is coming from the port casks that it's aged in. I could be wrong, but it's, it's definitely a finished bourbon. I was right, it was Angel's Envy. Uh, you can tell that the sweetness is there from the port wine barrels that they're aged in. Um, I typically don't like finished bourbons, so I only have a, a couple of them. Uh, this one's actually pretty decent. I would highly recommend it if you haven't had it before. Um, that was day 13, Angel's Envy. Let's move on to the next one, day 14. Welcome back to the 31 Days of Bourbon. I'm Ryan, this is day 14. We are going to do bottle five. Now, as always, I have no clue what I'm drinking. I won't know until I edit this, but you have an idea. Let's see if this is something that I have had before. There's almost like a melon, like watermelon rind that I'm getting. It's like really ripe fruit. Not really citrusy, but a little more sweet with a hint of spice. I'm gonna give it an eight. That's actually pretty good. Whoa, right up front, very sweet, very fruity, almost buttery mouthfeel. But then as you swallow it, there's that spice that just hits the back of your throat. This is good. Flavor is gonna be an 8.5. Finish, I'll give the finish a seven. Anyway, I, I don't know what this is. I've never had it before, but if you have had it, leave a comment below. That one was Old Forester Statesman. Uh, a lot of people hype this up online. It's Old Forester 1920, Old Forester 1910, and then Statesman. It's usually somewhere in the conversation. I, I apparently like this one a lot, but I honestly don't remember a whole lot about it. So I want to give it another shot. There definitely is some of that, some of that like melon rind. It's not bad. Um, I don't know if it's worth the 23.5 that I gave it. It's, it's a good bourbon, don't get me wrong. All right, let's take a look at day 15. Welcome back to the 31 days of bourbon. This is day 15 and we are gonna do bottle 10. 10? 10. 10. Oh, bright, crisp. It smells like Christmas in a glass. I don't know how else to describe it. Baking spices. It's more woodsy. I don't know how else to describe it. It's woodsy. I'm gonna give the aroma 7.5. It's pretty unique. Let's give it a taste. Wow, that opens up to a lot more fruit, vanilla, toffee. It's really balanced, really bright up front, and then it just kind of mellows into this nice um, caramely undertone. It reminds me of like a Twix candy bar. I'm gonna give the, the flavor an 8.5. The finish, um, it, it sits for a bit. I'm happy with it. I'm also gonna give the finish an eight. And of course that was Michter's, just an all around great bourbon. Um, rated pretty consistently, 7.5, 8.58. Uh, really just a great bourbon, great pour to have, and it's easier to find now than it was a couple years ago. So um, if you happen to find a, a bottle of Michter's, feel free to grab one, because you're not gonna be disappointed. Uh, let's go ahead and look at day 16. This one I was a little on the fence on. I'm gonna give myself another pour after we watch the video. Day 16. Welcome back to another 31 Days of Bourbon. I'm Ryan, this is day 16, and we are going to do bottle 14. As always, I have no clue what I'm drinking, only you do, I won't know until I edit this, but let's see if it's something that I have had before. 
It's like a smokiness. Almost kind of smells like burnt rubber. It's also really, really oaky. I'm gonna rate the aroma a five. It's kind of middle of the road. There's something weird going on with it that I don't know if I like or not. Let's give it a taste. It was a lot sweeter than I expected. There's, um, it's like candy bar sweet. That mouth feels nice and buttery, but there's still that little bit of smokiness that I pick up and I'm not quite sure what that's from. I'm gonna give the flavor a 6.5. Finish, not bad. I'll give it a seven. I also have no clue what that bourbon was. Couldn't tell you, I'd never had it before. Anyway, that one was Old Bardstown Estate Bottled. Uh, this is a Willet product. Uh, and typically you see Willet purple top, green top, and people are going crazy over it, right? But you also have to remember, Willet also makes the pot still, which is probably one of the most hated bourbons out there. Uh, I saw Distilled by Willets and got excited. Um, sometimes these old labels can be deceiving. Um, the, let's see, uh, Lugratio, I don't know if I'm saying that right, uh, sorry if I'm not, said the bottle and bond version was just okay for the price, I'd rather have JTS Brown. And I have a bottle of JTS Brown and I agree, that bottle uh, outperforms this bottle any day. Um, this is an allocated bottle, it was like $35 I think is what I spent. Um, I don't remember enjoying uh, enjoying the aroma too much. So um, let's see if I still hate it. Yeah, there's just something weird. It, it's it's a smoky, damp cellar. That's the aroma that I get with like a hint of like white pineapple gummy bears. I don't know why. Yeah, I mean, middle of the road. Still has that like that weird funk to it. I just like. I don't know what it's from and it's really hard to describe. It's funky. Um, if you haven't tried this and you really wanna try it, uh, leave me a comment, email me, message me on Instagram, uh, however you wanna contact me and I will ship you a, a two ounce bottle of it for you to try. Um, I'm just not a fan, so um, might as well share this bottle with all of you because uh, I doubt that I'm going to drink it anytime soon, if we're being honest. Uh, let's go ahead and check out uh, 17. I'm Ryan, and this is the 31 Days of Bourbon. This is day 17, and this is bottle... In bottle 17. Very sweet on the nose. Almost smells like honey and marshmallows. Smells good. I'm gonna give the aroma a seven out of 10. Uh, let's give it a sip. It's really light. I would say that's probably 80 proof. Marshmallowy sweetness. Um, it's a little floral. Um, it's not really something I pick up a lot, but I kind of pick up some floral notes on this one. A little hint of nuttiness. I'm gonna give the flavor a 6.5. Uh, finish, I'm gonna go with a six. Uh, this one was Breckenridge. Uh, it says here uh, on the bottle, whiskey with, oh, you probably can't read that. Whiskey with snow melt water from the Rocky Mountains. Um, little gimmicky. Uh, but it also says produced and bottled by Breckenridge Distillery. So, uh, it's gotta be sourced. They're clearly not um, making their own juice here, which is interesting that they say with snow melt water, uh, but they're not making it themselves. So uh, I don't know how that works. Um, I, I remember this one did came across like uh, marshmallow -y or, or marzipan. And yeah, I definitely get that. Um, a lot of honey, marshmallow, marzipan. Just just incredibly light, insanely light. Uh, there's virtually no burn. It's a really great starter bourbon, I think, because it's not overpoweringly sweet. It's just very subtle, very gentle on your palate. Um, it's not bad. I'd like something with a little more proof, but yeah, it's not bad. Uh, all right, let's look at day 18. Welcome to the 31 Days of Bourbon. I am Ryan, this is bottle 21? 21. Um, as always, I don't know what I'm drinking, only you do. I won't know until I edit this. That is earthy. Whoa. I get like tobacco, spice. I dig it. It's a good smell. 
I'm gonna give the aroma a 6.5. It's very rare to, for me to find a tobacco note in the aroma, but this one has it. Let's give it a sip. It's nutty, it's caramely, has some like burnt sugar, a little bit of dark chocolate undertones. Oh my God, this is good. The flavor's a nine. That is, wow. Finish, I'm gonna give it an 8.5. It's a really nice finish. Big fan of this. I don't know what it is. I've never had it before, but I'm buying myself another bottle. Not a bourbon. Uh, this is Redwood Empire's Lost Monarch. It is a blend of straight whiskeys. Um, so not necessarily a bourbon. There might, might be blended with a bourbon, but uh, it is a blend of straight rye whiskeys and straight bourbon whiskeys aged at least three years. Um, but this one was, was phenomenal. Um, to have that blend of earthiness. Yeah, I mean, this is one that would pair really well with a cigar. Um, just like that hint of tobacco and spice. Mmm. That is my new favorite cigar bourbon. Hands down, well, cigar whiskey. Not really a bourbon. Uh, if you're into cigars, you, you should pair your cigars with this Redwood Empire Lost Monarch. Phenomenal, it's so good. Um, almost savory, sweet, um, earthy. It has so much going on, I, I'm a big fan. Uh, all right, this very last one, probably the most controversial bourbon I have seen, the most divisive by far. Uh, there's a camp that absolutely loves it. There's a camp that absolutely hates it and I haven't found anyone that is in between. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at day 19. Welcome back to the 31 Days of Bourbon. This is day 19. We are going to do bottle 22. Oh, wow. Immediate green apple. A little bit of spice. It smells like an apple pie. I'm giving that an 8.5. 8.75, it's almost a nine. Very sweet, very light. You get like cream corn. There's just a little bit of spice. I'm gonna give the flavor an eight. It's pretty solid. Finish, it lingers just enough. 8.5, feels, feels reasonable. Uh, I have no clue what this is. It tastes really familiar, but I don't think I've ever smelled uh, a bourbon that smells like an apple pie. So I have no clue what it is. That one was Castle and Key 2023 Batch 1. Now this is not their weeded bourbon. This is their straight bourbon. Uh, maybe that makes a difference. I've also heard they're now doing 2023 Batch 2. And I've heard people say 2022's batches were awful. Um, if you look on any Facebook, Discord, whatever group, and you look for Castle and Key, there is undoubtedly a group of individuals that are just trashing this bourbon. They're saying, I had hopes for it, but it just wasn't good. Um, they need to figure out what they're doing with their distillery, really cool atmosphere, garbage bourbon, like a whole bunch of crazy things, right? Um, I tried a 2022 batch, I wanna say a batch three, maybe batch two, two, and it was good. It wasn't phenomenal, but it was good. This 2023 batch one is amazing. So much better than last year's batch. I, I can't speak for 2023 batch two, but 2023 batch one definitely gives some of that apple pie vibes. You have the apple, the spice, the little bit of like fresh dough. Um, it's such a good bourbon and it's maybe $60 for a bottle. It's nice and affordable, not really allocated. You know, I, I rated it a 25.25. We can round up to 25.5. This is the best of the week. So I, I get taste is subjective. Certain people are gonna hate certain things. Uh, by the way, this this is um, a second bottle. This is sealed, full disclosure, um, because I cracked open a new bottle for that video and it's gone. Uh, within the last week, I, I've drank some of it, I've shared some of it, I've sent out some, some two ounce bottles to some friends uh, because I, like, I had to share. That batch was phenomenal. This batch is still 2023 batch one. Um, granted, it could be you know different barrel. I don't know. 
Um, I'm hoping this is the same as the bottle that I just emptied. Because uh, it's it's such a good bourbon. It's, it's underrated in my opinion. Um, 2022 batches, take or toss. Not huge fan, but they were okay. 2023 batch one, I mean, amazing. I'm, I'm hoping I can find a 2023 batch two so I can uh, I can grab it and compare. I'm gonna keep messing with the castle and key. Y'all can hate on it all you want because it leaves <laughs> more for me. Anyway, that is the end of week three. Thank you guys so much for watching. Sorry for the late post. I, I just uh, completely forgot with work and, and trying to keep up with the videos daily and it was a whole thing. Week four will be on time. I promise you week five will be on time. Um, maybe. Uh, thanks for watching. Much appreciated. See you guys on the next one. Bye.